what is the role of words in healing? All right, so first of all, thanks for being here in the spiritual healing class too. So this is the classical part, like we, we come together here first and then we meet in, as, as a group online, in fact. And so this is also for YouTube, so to speak. So I'm really happy that you're here and that you uh, decided to tune in to this. I'm really happy that you do that and um, we're going to start off today with um, some relaxation first. Like, oh yeah, what are we doing here? We're, we're actually coming into a present moment together. We're, we're diving into this moment, leaving things behind that have nothing to do with this present moment. So, how do you do that? Well, focus on your breath, relax, uh, breathe out, gently breathe in. So if you feel like moving a little bit, just move, move your shoulders or sigh. So you're just deeply relaxed, that makes it easier for you to, to receive all this and to to also become more present here, that's even more important. Like you become completely present here if you do so. Concerns out of the way. Okay, my mind is still doing its thing, but I'm letting it, I'm not paying attention to it. I'm relaps relaxing deeply into this. So no, no worries for tomorrow, no worries for today, all worries going out of the way for now no engagement in the thoughts and in the things that seems to be circling in your mind yeah that's better so hey opening your consciousness for light and love Mm, that's great. That's a real opportunity to to sink deeper and come closer in contact with you know, the core of your being, with that what is still and quiet and always in communication. Here, yeah, here's that place in you. Yeah, you did that. You did that right. See, immediately you feel also that you start to communicate with whatever appears to be there. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever that is. I don't even know what I'm communicating with, but I feel that my mind is opening up. And then suddenly, say, light comes into my mind and, and it's just present here. So is this, is this healing? Is this light? Is this recognizing who you are? Yeah, absolutely. So are we actually spending a moment of reality here? A real moment in time? Yes, absolutely. We're, we're even having a great opportunity to go out of time together to, to realize that, well, this is not the place where we meet. This looks like I see things with my eyes, but actually this is not the place where we meet at all. This, this has nothing to do with that. Like, you know there's no distance between us like there's no you over there and me right here or no it's like no this whole idea of space and time just starts to dissolve you you feel the presence of one another here you feel that you're present here you know and that that, that that's occurring right now so that's why I want to take you into this experience that is a real possibility to, to experience oneness or to experience connectedness at least and and say moments of peace, glimpses of truth, who knows, or a revelation of what is actually occurring, that it has nothing to do with the way that you look like with your eyes, what you see with your eyes, but it has to do with vision that has no relationship to, to perception at all. So this is our introduction. So are our words then important in healing? Do we really uh, need to use words in healing? 
this is the subject that we're looking into today. And I know that uh, Joel Goldsmith, uh, the art of spiritual healing that we used, he say in some other classes in spiritual healing, uh, writes about that too. I w we'll take that another uh, another moment uh, into account, so to speak. We're going to take a look at that um, in another class when we come together. But here today we use the ur text of A Course in Miracles to to dive into that, like. What does actually the Course say about that? How how does that work? Wow, that's really interesting that it's in here too. Like Joel speaking about it, but also here. Like, are words important? See, why is there so much similarity between what Joel says and what is in the Course in Miracles? Because, in fact, what Joel teaches is the teaching of Jesus. The Course in Miracles is also directly from Jesus. It is the download that Jesus gave to Helen Schuckman. She wrote it down together with Bill. And and here uh, it is written, it is given to us in this form. So the similarities are quite, um, uh, yeah, they're great. You know, the similarities is, is our joint Christ mind. There's literally only one mind. So how could there be differences in that? Like if there's only one mind and it's your Christ mind, it is your Christ mind. How could there be a conflict? There cannot be. So I'm still using words. You, you can tell. <laughs> so I use a lot of words. Uh, is that necessary? Well, let's let's read and see what what the course says about it. I love this chapter. So it's in volume three, the manual for teachers. And it is on page 437 of the Urtex of A Course in Miracles, the combined seven-volume edition. What is the role of words in healing? Okay, here we go. Strictly speaking, words play no part at all in healing. The motivating factor is praying, is prayer or asking. What you ask for you receive. So the biblical reference to that is, because hey, here's another reference. The New Testament. Matthew, Matthew is coming to assist us here. Matthew says this in Matthew 21, 22. Verse 22, and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. So now we have everything coming together in this class. It's unbelievable. It's like Jesus, Joel, um, Course in Miracles, New Testament, Matthew, all sharing about the same thing, coming from the same mind. All things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Coming back to A Course in Miracles. What you ask for, you receive. But this refers to the prayer of the heart. All right. So this refers to the prayer of the heart, not the words. Not to the words you use in prayer. It's absolutely redundant. Like it's not doing, making any difference. It doesn't really matter what you ask, what words you use. So in that, <coughs> I know that's a sensitive spot, so to speak, a sensitive spot in, in um, say, the infidel way students, because Joel says, don't, don't ask for anything. You know, John, don't ask for anything. He says that in some books, in some not always, but in some books he says this. And it's something that students of the Infinite Way remember so really well, not to ask for anything. But see, here it is like, it is not about the words that you use in asking. It has nothing to do with that. What are you asking for in your heart? That's where it's about. You ask for anything anyway. You continuously ask for something whether you like it or not. Like you ask continuously for something and you get the reflections back at you. You get what you ask for. 
you say like, well, I don't really like my life, or I don't like this that that happens in my life, or this is always the case for me, and I don't know how to get out of it. Well, remember, you're the one literally asking for it. You get exactly what you ask for. See, this is one thing that the love of God will not stop you to give. It will give you continuously what you ask for. But what it is, what is it that you ask? Where's that place where you ask? See, coming from a uh, human, uh, say, ego mind, so to speak, uh, coming from a perceptual mind with concepts as its basis, you compare yourself with others or an analy analyze your situation. But you can compare yourself with your neighbor and say like, well, I actually want what he has, or I want this, or I, mm, it seems that that might be really good for me. So I'm, I'm asking for that too. I want that to happen to me. So this is what you do continuously. You're asking for everything. That's where you get the result from. So what Jesus is pointing at here is, okay, where's the place where you ask from? Are you asking with your heart, with your true, like, is it the true asking that you ask for? Okay, so we continue. This refers to the prayer of the heart, not of the words you use in praying. Sometimes the words and the prayer are contradictory. Sometimes they agree. It doesn't matter. Okay, so now it doesn't, it doesn't matter what the way that you ask it. God does not understand words, for they were made by the separated minds to keep them in the illusion of separation. Words can be helpful, particularly for the beginner, in helping concentration and facilitating the exclusion or at least the control of extraneous thoughts. Let us not forget, however, that words are but symbols of symbols. So, in other words, they are twice removed from reality. As symbols, words have quite specific references, even when they seem most abstract. The picture which comes to mind is apt to be very concrete. So unless a specific referent doesn't occur to the mind in conjunction with the word, the word has little or no practical meaning and thus cannot help the healing process. Okay, so that's what the ideas are related to words. It's like they're so far removed from reality that that like yeah it it doesn't it is not showing up on the radar, so to speak, on the radar of God. <laughs> it's not showing up on it. It's like, no, that was nothing. But the prayer of the heart does not really ask for concrete things. It always requests some kind of experience. The specific things asked for being the bringers of the desired experience in the judgment of the asker. The words then are symbols for the thing asked for, but the things themselves but stand for the experiences which are hoped for. Okay, so the next question is of the next sentence is going to reveal this to you. What what happens? So in A3 it says the prayer for things of this world will bring experiences of this world. So this is what I just told you. It's like well, see continuously in fact you're continuously whole day long you're praying for something and you get the result of it. So are you praying for worldly things? You get a you get a reflection of worldly things. You literally start to receive the worldly things. Like, oh, I would love to go to this beautiful place and just and just hang out there a couple of days. Well, you're going to realize that probably because it's like 
it is what you want. So you're suddenly everything seems to work that way that you can go there and have that experience. So it's really up to you. What kind of experience do you want to flow through your awareness? Not that there's anything wrong with either one of them, like there's nothing wrong with it. No, it is about, is it is it real or not? Is it just an escape or a little dream that you have? So the prayer for things of this world will bring experiences of this world. If the prayer of the heart asks for this, this will be given. If the prayer of the heart asks for this, this will be given because this will be received. It is impossible that the prayer of the heart remain unanswered in perception of the one who asks. If he asks for the impossible, if he wants what does not exist or seeks for illusions in his heart, all this becomes his own. See, it's like it doesn't matter what you ask for in, in terms of you will reach, you will literally manage to what you are asking for in your heart, you will realize, you will literally manifest that. All the situations will change so beautifully that it fits so right in into what you actually wanted and that you cannot believe that you created it yourself. But it seems to be like, yeah, special in that sense. So then here it refers to, okay, what are you asking for? Is it is it something of an illusory nature? Well, if that is what you ask for, you will going to get that too. Like you see that in one of the lessons too, uh, in the review lessons, like uh, real thoughts will lead to reality, like illusory thoughts will lead to illusions, to an, uh, say a different experience. So you want actually you want to start to think true thoughts and ask for that into your in your heart so if he wants what does not exist or seeks for illusions in his heart all this becomes his own the power of his decision offers it to him as he requests herein lie heaven and hell the sleeping Son of God has but this power left to him. It is enough. His words do not matter. Only the word of God has any meaning, because it symbolizes that which has no human symbols at all. So the Holy Spirit alone understands what this word stands for, word with capital W. And this too is enough. So I'm I'm just going to keep going through this text because it's so um, great to read this. And also, at the end of that, we will come back to see, to take another look at this. So is the teacher of God then to avoid the use of words in his teaching? No, indeed. Okay, so I'm allowed to do, <laughs> I'm allowed to do this. Like... Is the teacher of God then to avoid the use of words in his teaching? No. And teaching is healing too. It's like, no indeed. There are many who must be reached through words, being as yet unable to hear in silence. The teacher of God must, however, learn to use words in a new way. Gradually, he learns how to let his words be chosen for him, by ceasing to decide for himself what he will say. This process is merely a special case of the workbook lesson. I will step back and let him lead the way. The teacher of God accepts the word which are offered him and gives as he receives. He does not control the direction of his speaking. He listens and hears and speaks. Yeah, this is amazing. So I stop here right now. It's like, this is amazing because this is what is happening. You know, this is like what I'm demonstrating. This I wouldn't know what to tell you. I wouldn't know what to share with you. And I don't have to know. So literally by trusting that what is given for me to share, it is flowing through me. 
I have no conscious control over what I'm saying. I'm trusting that what comes out is, is what needs to come out. It is literally given to me. I have I've not even a memory of what I'm saying. Like, and, and not that that is special. No, it is like, no, this is just something that you can allow yourself to, to happen to yourself. You know, you can, you can develop this if you want. It's not really developing anything. It's getting out of the way and trusting what is given. So step by step, you realize, oh my God, how that works is so beautiful. I can trust this. Yes, I can trust my feeling. Oh my God, I'm speaking. I, but I, I would never have done this as, as in my human memory of myself. I would never start to speak like this. And now actually I'm opening my mouth. And what comes out, whatever that is, it is going to be helpful. It's going to be so well. Um, it is so well coming together. It is so well, uh, say, organized, if you want to see it like that. It's like it's so well organized. It's unbelievable. There's a real plan behind all of this. And it's something that you asked for in your heart. You literally asked for this to come to you. That's why it becomes so transparent. It's unbelievable. You know, it's like it's happening in this moment. I'm actually sharing about this right now. And you're in the middle of that process and you're receiving that. Because you asked for it. You have a direct, uh, say, letting this all come falling into place for yourself seeing this at work right now you know we don't need to go anywhere for it or you don't need to study this in order to receive this no it's happening right now it's happening right now does it need words no see in fact it is not about the words at all what's being shown here is is a possibility to see what is actually working So can can I repeat what I just said? No, it is, is completely gone. I wouldn't know what I've said. You know, this is how that goes. So really beautiful. And I, I love to offer this in itself too. It's like, I love to offer this as a practice. Like, how can we practice this together? By, by just doing it. In fact, it is like opening your mouth and the words will roll out of, yeah, all that comes with this. I love it. I love this. It's so great. So we come to this just by by this part of the manual for teachers. Okay, so this is lesson 100, a special workbook lesson. I will step back and let him lead away. That's another beautiful lesson we're going to do one day for sure. So the teacher of God accepts the words which are offered him and gives as he receives. He does not control the direction of his speaking. He listens and hears and speaks. Yeah, it's beautiful. A major hindrance in this aspect of his learning is the teacher of God's fear about the validity of what he hears. And what he hears may indeed be quite startling. It may also be seem to be irrelevant to the present problem as he perceives it and may in fact confront him with situations that appears to be very embarrassing. <laughs> All these are judgments by which, which have no value. They are his own coming from the shabby self-perception that he would leave behind. Judge not the words that come to you but offer them in confidence. They are far wiser than your own. Well, that's good to know. That's, I, I totally agree. <laughs> God's teachers have God's words behind their symbols. And he himself gives the words they use, the power of his spirit, raising them from meaningless symbols into the call of heaven itself. See, I wanted to read that. He fears may indeed be quite startling. Yeah, quite startling or embarrassing. So yeah, this embarrassing part, in which I, which you're not say controlling what you say and what you share, can be quite embarrassing. So I have beautiful experiences with that too. 
and and it's like it brings you right here and it has an incredible impact on others too so um yeah it, it is great to use this and it's beautiful to let this happen so uh, so is that part of healing yeah absolutely because see the whole tendency of healing of spiritual healing is stepping back you're not doing anything you don't need to be, to be concerned if you're saying the right thing or not no just trust learn to trust like trust um, with full confidence share what comes out of your mouth like what flows through allow that to come out and and share with others in that healing can take place because um, many of us need words in order to receive the healing for themselves. Not that the words matter, no, but they help to open ourselves up for the truth of who we are. Or to, to become aware, like, oh yeah, wait a minute, I, I gotta let go of this idea. Oh my God, it has been bugging my mind for forever. Now I have to get it out of the way. I'm going to let go of the attention that I give it. And and suddenly there's space in in the mind. Like it's continuously uh, uh, letting go of the contraction of the holding on to something that you might not even be aware of what it is. But you're tense. You're holding on. You're contracted in a certain way, and that and it's not a big deal. You can you can change that in an instant, and see that that opens you up to receive more light and more communication. So it's a great part of the say the manual for teachers. I love this. So you don't have to use words if you're allowed. So if you're used to communicating in stillness, wow, well, boy, yeah, you don't need words at all. You can you can take each other home with no words. Believe me, absolutely, and we we also love to practice that. Like it can happen right now. I'm actually offering this to you in this instant. Like, yeah, let's be quiet and, and allow this to occur. Let's the stillness speak to us for just a moment. You know, like, oh yeah, we're practicing getting out of the way. Like, oh yeah, let's get out of the way for now. I'm ceasing to speak, you know, I'm just shutting up for a moment. <laughs> Even though it's completely given what to share with you, I'm still being quiet now. Yeah, so are you able to listen to the stillness? Are you able to communicate while we're quiet? Like, are you feeling the gratitude for the, what is given in this moment? Like, are you experiencing grace, maybe? Or are you discovering that you're still, like, occupied with your thoughts and that you don't know how to get out of that? Or maybe something else is going on. Are you distracted by sounds? that appear to be outside of you whatever it is it is exactly the experience you ask for again and that is that's okay so what is it you ask for you know this is this is a good one to contemplate too it's like what is it i'm asking for in my heart that's going to determine the reality of my experience of myself what am I asking for in my heart? Do I, do I want to prove that God does not exist and that God is separated from us? Or am I willing to wholeheartedly ask for a different experience of myself? 
it's completely up to you. One leads to hell and the other leads to heaven. So that's that is the that is what is given to you. Like you continuously turn the switch somewhere. It's like okay, hell, hell, heaven, hell. <laughs> On a daily basis, you're doing this continuously. You make decisions. Your your mind is the decision maker, as it says in the course. It's like you continuously make decisions about what you want to experience. So were you aware that you have a choice in the matter, that you literally choose your own experience continuously? So up to the moment that you come, see, as I speak to, it's like, if you come to the moment where you discover like, oh, I don't want to make these decisions anymore. I hand even my decisions over. It's like, okay, decide for me. Spirit, decide for me because, you know, I I want what comes through you to me. I'm part of this holy trinity and I want to experience that. I want to dive directly into the experience of the trinity that where I'm part of. So spiritual healing. So we continue this class series in the next part. So that will start next week. Um, so it is a different class too. We become even more practical. So we, we become practical in these classes too because after this moment of introduction in fact of looking at a part of scripture a part of the course in miracles or the books of joel we have we come together and we uh, have moments that we feel like oh yeah i, I want to share something so that's what you can do but in the in the next part of the spiritual healing class that is coming up we're actually uh, taking time to to practice this even more and in what form and how that is going uh, will be given to us like just as we trust what has been given to us here as what's being shared that will continue so that's that's why i just trust what is given in the moment and coming up with with say a so-called new class we're continuing this process and i hope that you will be part of it that would be so lovely so thank you so much for being part of this and um, i hope to see you soon thank you <laughs>